question. You talked about um, take, having a patient as a control. Like if, if I have if I if I have a cancer cell, mm -hmm. I'm also going to be my control. So my question is if it, there are some there are some cancers that are very uh, malignant, but they are hard to you know detect. So how are you sure that you're not taking another cancer cell, or is it that already has a mutation as control? Uh, it's a great question, <clears throat> and you basically are going to look at those. So if <clears throat> Excuse me. If you have a solid tumor, lung or melanoma or breast, <clears throat> blood is usually a pretty good control. The pathologist actually look at the blood quickly and make sure that he's not seeing a tumor there. <clears throat> There's typically not a lot of circulating tumor cells. There is some circulating tumor DNA, but it's a very small amount. So blood is a good control for most solid tissues. You can't use blood as a control for leukemia, so you use a little skin. Uh, and you're going to basically uh, have a close look at that to make sure that you're not going to have cancer cells. Yeah, a question. Um, so you mentioned that like, it takes about six weeks for a whole genome to be sequenced, um, which is really fast. I was just wondering if it's technique or machine fast currently limiting the speed of it. Well, um, <clears throat> it's really changed. So the process right now, you Spend a few days getting the sample in the hands, <coughs> turning it into DNA, and putting it in a uh, form that you can put on your sequencing machine. The sequencing actually takes about a week. <coughs> Excuse me. And then the analysis is what takes the bulk of the time. The analysis, the interpretation, and getting it right. That's the bottom line. And that's very much a manual process now. So like, we, we hire all these WizKid computer hackers to write really great software tools, and you try to get the computer, see this is why we need that Watson computer, because uh, if he can come up with Jeopardy answers, and, you know, milliseconds, you should be able to figure out the different locations. Um, but, you, you know, you can have a very powerful computer, but you have to write the right software for it, so that's that's where a lot of evolution is going on. That's what makes it so Research that has been um, like people that have expressed interest in research through sequencing um, is there kind of like a bias towards looking at diseases that have treatment for early diagnosis? Great question. Is that Great question. So, question one happened. Um, I'm, I'm very opposed to trying to patent a gene, which means that I'm going to try to write a broad patent some gene and I'm going to try to control everything that's done with it. Uh, that's not right. Although there are plenty of companies that try. Um, Berka 1 and 2 is an interesting situation. You basically had some scientists, mostly at Hopkins, who discovered that this gene was important in breast cancer. Um, they wrote a patent. Marriott licensed it, built on that patent, right? And now they charge three grand to test you. Um, and if you try to simply sequence BRCA1 or BRCA2 in your clinical lab and report results back to the physician area, they come try to see. Um, like uh, any good, um, you know, sort of patent situation, there are plenty of, with, with lots of the state, there are plenty of patent lawyers that are trying to figure out ways to get around that. There may be ways to get around that. So that's one thing that I think is, is, is pretty interesting. Uh, so we'll see how that all plays out. In fact, there's, you know, as you know, there are lawsuits now. This is what you're talking about. Uh, patients who are suing Marianne case, but I don't have $3,000. That's a lot of money for a test. Uh, and it doesn't cost the lab $3,000 to run that test. They're making a pretty good profit. Um, so we'll see how that plays out. Um, we, when we find things, like when we found a dnmt 3 we reported it to Washington University's office.
Office of Technology Management, and they file a provisional patent on that. And you have to do that. Um, these are the reasons. So first of all, the nice thing about being a, you know, an academic and doing that through your university is you then have control. And the idea is, is that if, if company A comes and says, we want to um, license that, that patent, that finding, um, we'll pay you X millions of dollars for it, right? Uh, but we want exclusive rights to it. You can't let any other company. So what we what we do is we say, no, we refuse to license it exclusively. We want company B, company C, and company D to all have a shot at it. We want you guys to go out and compete to see who can develop the best test and who can have uh, the lowest cost, right? The other thing that company A could do, if they got it exclusively, they could put it away. Right? Let's say they had a drug on the market, and if you could quickly uh, test for a particular mutation, which might say company A's drug isn't going to be any good, you should use company B's drug, because that's really the right thing to treat a patient with a mutation in that gene. Right? That would be bad for company A. So they simply lock up that gene so nobody else can test for it. It's obviously not the best thing for the patient population. So that's our strategy. Is that it's, well, well, because you still can file a patent on gene until the you know, this whole Berka 1 and 2 thing uh, plays out. That's the way we've sort of chosen to go about it so that we can then make it available for the competitive situation. Question two. Uh, genomics uh, does tend to go to uh, toward diseases, uh, you know, that are, that are a big problem, not so much. You like to think about actionable things, right? You like to say, I have a drug. I'd like to be able to know... Um, which patients are going to do well with this drug so I can test for them and I can get them on the drug and make them better as quickly as possible. Uh, so there is some of that, but there's also just, uh, this is, here's a particular disease we don't understand what causes it, it must be genetic roots. Can we simply get DNA from a bunch of people with that disease? Can we get um, family members? Cancer is actually easy because you have the built-in control. For every patient, you've got tumor and normal, so you're only looking for the differences. But if you only sequence tumor from 50, people, you'd find hundreds of differences between each patient's tumor genome, some that were relevant to the cancer and many others that weren't relevant just because they came you know, from different ethnic backgrounds or you know, so forth. So uh, cancer's been sort of the first place that this has really had a big impact because of the built-in home. Uh, but what we're now starting to do because the costs have gone down, we're taking it to a lot of Diabetes is a big target. Heart disease is a big target. So. One last question. Can I'll let you decide who gets to ask it. Um, so I'm not accused of playing favorites. What do you mean, you mean, no. Um, that is the next question. Sorry. Uh, so I work with Dr. Elgin doing mm -hmm. some sequencing on Drosophila. And so some things that we look at is when we see insertions, kind of like you saw in the atypical situation, is we look at what potentially mobilizes that part of the sequence to be able to jump into a different part of the chromosome. I'm wondering if part of the work you're doing looks into that atypical situation in terms of if there's anything flanking that region that allows it to move into a different region of the gene So as well. I think... Uh, not obvious. And one of the things that we've learned is we've sequenced, uh, you know, what people knew 15, 17 brain bunch for years, they kind of knew what two genes were involved in. Only through our sequencing of maybe 12 different patients with those translocations, we found that they're not all the same. There's not, you know, 50 bases here and 50 bases here that represent, you know, an easy to sort of put your finger on the mechanism for why that hotspot seems to exist. So we're still trying to understand that it's variable from patient to patient. And with that sort of thing in mind, maybe it's not surprising that you also now have the sort of insertional fusions as well. So that's that's a question we're still trying to answer. But it, it, the, you know, what you're saying in Drosophila is probably a pretty good model. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, 
You know, if you want to funnel some questions via email, yeah. uh, it probably won't get it answered until after March 3rd when the grant goes in. Thank you. Yes. Oh, nice to meet you too. Thanks a lot. So I'm done saying this. Okay. Hope you did. That's fine. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Excuse me if I'm a little slow in responding. There's a bunch, bunch going on. Oh, my pleasure. Is that is that okay? Excellent. Cool. I was glad to please the crowd. My pleasure. Thanks. All right, Kim. We'll see you soon. Take it easy.